Today, we're gonna learn how to find the present value of an annuity. Before we jump into Microsoft Excel, I want to talk a moment about the concept of discounting and the concept of an annuity. Both of these are confusing concepts, it's confusing terminology, it's hard to wrap your head around what you're doing. So finding the present value and discounting, those two terms are synonymous. If you're discounting, then you're trying to find the present value. If there's some sum of money in the future, you discount it to find the present value. And you can do the exact same thing with an annuity, a stream of payments. So if you're receiving a stream of payments for whatever reason, that stream of payments is called an annuity and you can discount that stream of payments to find the present value of that stream of payments. The thing to remember is that psychologically, human beings have a preference for having money today so we can buy things we want today and have pleasure and joy in our lives today. And we have a tendency to want to put pain off into the future meaning we think about money today and money in the future, we'd rather have it today so we don't put much psychological value on money in the future. That's the logic behind discounting. The term annuity is also confusing in this context. Just remember that an annuity is just a stream of constant payments with a finite end date. Now the phrase annuity is also confusing because it has multiple meanings. There is a savings device, a retirement device called the tax deferred annuity that insurance companies will sometimes try to sell people. And with that, you pay money in over, over time, a stream of payments going in, an annuity, and then you get money out, a stream of payments coming back to you over time, an annuity. We're not talking about the, the investment tool uh, annuity. We're talking about the general concept of a stream of payments that are constant and periodic with a known end date. So always try to keep that kind of straight in your mind. We're, we're just talking about the mathematics of dealing with this stream of payments over time. So in this video, we're going to find the present value. We're going to discount a stream of payments over time. So off camera, I've set up this spreadsheet. And it would be a good idea for you to hit pause and uh, type up what I have typed up here so that you can follow along. Following along with this spreadsheet is the best way to learn how to discount a stream of payments, how to discount an annuity and find the present value of that annuity. I've entered a monthly periodic cash flow, a monthly payout, so we're assuming that for some reason, I don't know why, you're receiving $5,000 a month. Maybe this is a structured settlement where you were injured and you won the court case and someone has to pay you $5,000 a month. Or maybe you've retired and you're going to draw $5,000 a month out of your retirement income and you're going to do that for 15 years and we have a discount rate of 3%. The thing to remember about the discount rate, uh, typically we think of it as being roughly what you'd expect an interest rate to be, but always remember that we want to think of it as a psychological concept. The bigger that number, the less important the future is to us psychologically. That's the appropriate way to think about a, a discount rate. That might not be the way you would read about in most finance textbooks, but it makes sense to think about it as a psychological thing. The bigger the discount rate, the more you prefer the present as opposed to the future. We need to convert our annual discount rate into a monthly discount rate. So we're going to move our cursor to cell B4, hit an equal sign, click on our 3% annual discount rate, and divide that by 12 and press enter. Now our total months, we need to move from years to months, so we'll type an equal sign, click on the number of years we plan on drawing this income, type an asterisk to multiply, and multiply that by 12, 12 months in a year. Now we're going to find the present value, and we're going to find the present value using an Excel function that we've used before. We type an equal sign and PV for present value and then open parentheses. And we get these series of prompts and if you've been watching my videos, this formula looks familiar. It's the exact same Excel function that we use for finding the present value of some single lump sum payment off in the future. Uh, the arguments are the same, the functions are exactly the same. The only difference is what we put into the function. 
and so it's important to learn how these functions are structured so you know what Excel is looking for. At this point the game is just picking the right Excel function and giving Excel the information Excel expects and the various arguments so in between the commas. So the first thing we want is a rate and because we're doing this monthly we want the monthly discount rate. If our payments were coming annually we'd use the annual discount rate but we want the monthly discount rate because this is a monthly payout, a monthly periodic cash flow. In this case, it's a quarter of a percent. Um, there's, of course, some rounding error there that's not displayed. Uh, type a comma and enter the number of periods. Again, this is the number of months, 180 months. And then a comma, and then we enter the payment. This is where we enter the actual cash flow. And for that, we click on the $5,000. Now, the next two arguments are what we call optional arguments. We don't need them to make the function work. The FV argument is used if there is some lump sum off in the future we're expecting to get that's kind of outside or separate from this stream of, uh, of payments. Um, and then the type, we use that to pick between an ordinary annuity and an annuity due. And what I'll do here in a little bit is show you the two formulas so you can see the difference in how the result changes. So we're going to close this parenthesis and we're going to press enter and we're done. So we have a negative number and it's negative because these formulas are thinking in terms of cash flows. All of these finance formulas do this. If you were to use a financial calculator or download an app on your cell phone, um, you would get the same type of result. There's nothing really wrong with this result. It's just a nonsense result because we don't tend to think in terms of negative numbers. So we have to change our monthly periodic payout, our cash flow, uh, here the payment, to a negative. So we'll change cell B1 from 5,000 to negative 5,000 here in our formula and press enter. And now we get a positive number, $724,000. Now this is for an ordinary annuity because we didn't enter the type argument. What I want to do now is I want to calculate the present value. for an annuity due and compare that to the present value for an ordinary annuity so that you can see that there is a very slight difference in the formula in the and in the result so with the annuity due we're going to use the exact same Excel function equals PV it's going to use the exact same arguments we're going to use the exact same rate the exact same number of periods, the exact same payment, the negative of $5,000. And then we'll type a comma to skip the future value. We can enter a zero here if we wanted to. Might as well do that. And then we can enter the type. Zero is the end of period. That's an ordinary annuity. And one is the beginning of the period. That is an annuity due. So we'll type a one here and we'll close the parentheses and you will see that we get a, a slightly different result. It's not a big difference because we're looking at you know, 15 years of, uh, of cash flows here, but it's a difference of about $1,800. You're discounting an extra 30 days for every payment, basically, whereas the annuity due says, hey, I slightly prefer to have my money on the first day of the month instead of the last day of the month. Again, uh, the last day of the month is off in the future, and that's less desirable than the first day of the month. If you have a different way of calculating this, if you have a different way of setting up your spreadsheets in Excel or a different way of explaining or understanding annuities and discounting, I'd really like to hear about it. Feel free to post in the comments below. Thank you for watching my video. Feel free to hit the like button if you liked it and subscribe if you want to hear more about finance in Microsoft Excel.